Let the games begin. Come on, Zora, let them out. Come on. Good morning, everybody. Dun, 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 dun. Dun 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 The piranhas. Got to fill up all their water dishes. A lot of chickens. Good morning, ladies. And boys. We've got some lettuce, some kind of big melon, tomatoes. Green peppers, they don't eat the peppers, but they, they like the seeds on the inside. They like these seeds. Yeah, they get a lot of good food, especially this time of year. I gave them all the restaurant slops last night. They had two big buckets of plate scrapings and bread. I noticed a lot of French fries they had last night, and of course, uh, you know, they had all those fish fish bones the other day I cooked for them. I still got more of those to cook. I stuck in the freezer. But, uh, yeah, it makes the eggs really nice when they get all this variety, and then, you know, then they go out and they eat bugs and stuff out here. There's a lot of crickets out right now, this time of year. Um, and I'll see if I can catch them in, when they're doing it, but, you know, some of these older ones, they'll, they'll all, they all figure it out eventually, but the older ones will, uh, they'll make a nice little line, like four, five, six chickens, usually a rooster leads them. And they'll march through the grass here and kind of herd the, herd the crickets along. And, and they get a lot of crickets that way. Um, i got to mow this little piece too. As soon as, every time when I mow, they come right out and, and they like it right after I mow. Because it exposes all the bugs and stuff. Probably mashes up a bunch of crickets too, but they find them. But, yeah... Pat moved in up there. That's an old uh, timber frame that was never finished, so he's he's kind of off the grid. But uh, he's a nice guy. Those are his peppers. All right, just a little uh, little chicken activity for you guys. I thought you might like to see how they how they tear out of the house every morning, and they see what I've got for them and. You know, once they go through the through the food I dump for them, then they start kind of spreading out, picking around, looking for looking for bugs in the in the woods and in the weeds. So anyway, little babies are doing good. Little junkyard chickens. chickens mom's getting a little more tolerant of them being around 
other uh, like Zora. She still won't let Zora get too close to him. Zora likes the little baby, so. All right, I'll get you guys some water. Zora likes little babies. We've been taking Zora to the uh, nursing home too, and we walk around and the old people pet her. She's very good. She just sits there and gets complimented and petted. And lucky old people get kisses. See how all the chickens just got spooked? The crows or somebody's probably around. I don't know if you heard that, but the <coughs> the roosters make a uh, a certain warning noise. If you want, I'm sure they just made it. If you if you go back few seconds and then re-listen to it you'll hear that little burp kind of noise that the roosters make when uh, they're warning the warning the hens about something I don't know what what they think was after them <clears throat> usually when something flies overhead they'll they'll make that noise um, and the crows you know I have a feeling that the crows as soon as I leave the crows swoop in here to uh, to see what I've see what I left for them, and I don't know. I've never like witnessed a good rooster crow fight, but I know they get into it sometimes. But I think the crows always win. Um, years ago, when I used to raise turkeys, I had I had actually kind of my own kind of breed of turkeys. They were part wild. The wild ones came down and bred my my heirloom bourbon reds and my uh, gray slate turkeys, which are an old style turkey. They're not the commercial ones, and. Um, I had a pen where the the mother, you know, I used to put a couple uh, turkey hens up there with eggs, and they were really great at hatching out their hatching out their own babies. And uh, you know, if I put 15, 17 eggs underneath the turkey hen up in one of those in, in my pen up there, uh, you'd get 15 or 17 babies every time. It was pretty. It was pretty cool, and they were really pretty because they were part part wild and part red or part gray. But uh, I came back one day. I had. Uh, I had one hen had just barely hatched some babies, and another hen was was still sitting on her eggs. And I came back, and uh, there was a couple of ravens in the pen. They had one little. I, I had a ceiling on the pen, but they had one. They got in there one little hole they found to get in there, and they were eating little baby uh, turkey chicks and and eggs. And the mother the mother turkeys were furious, but uh, those ravens were a lot tougher than the than the turkeys were. And I hate to tell you, but I. I got my shotgun and uh, put an end to it with the ravens. I didn't know. I was trying to get them to... I don't think they would have found their way out again. I didn't know what else to do, and I, I didn't feel good about doing it, but... Uh, I had to shoot the ravens. Because they were right in the pen. They were killing all the babies. And uh, like I say, I don't I don't know how I would have gotten them out of there. So it was a really small little hole. But... uh little turkey story for you guys. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I could tell you guys lots of farm stories when I had all my animals before the cabin burned. Um, what else was I going to say? Yeah, well, um, one morning, one year, you know, and I had I had those those you know they were all free range, just like these chickens, but we were up in the woods, and uh. Um, they used to mix and match with the wild with the wild turkeys, and uh, I got a couple stories. But one one was kind of cute. When, like I told you, we had uh, I had that pen for like three or four years in a row. I had I had mother turkeys hatch out babies. Well, one year I had, you know, like 15, 15 little turkeys hatched out under a gray, under a, one of one of my gray mothers, but they were still in the pen. Well, me and my girlfriend at the time. We're laying in the cabin. We looked in the, it was early in the morning. My my friend said to me, my girlfriend said to me, um, "Hey, look, your your turkey hen got out with the babies." And we looked out the window, and there was a gray hen with a bunch of babies. And I was like, "Huh? How could that? I wonder how they got out." Well, I ran. I got out. Went outside, and uh, the the mother was still there. The, the mother and her babies were still in the pen. So this was a mother that had that had gone off somewhere. And hatched her eggs and uh, came back with them or else she'd been living in the wild. Because I had them for a while that, that they would go out and they'd live in the wild. 
but um, it was it was very coincidental because it was a gray hen and it was about the same amount of babies that I had that had just hatched in the pen. And then uh, one year, I had like I think it was 55 or so turkeys free ranging around my yard, and they used to roost on the top of my cabin and roost up in the in the trees at night. Um, but I would try to count them every night. And, uh, or, you know, whenever I could, I would count them and make sure and see how the population was doing. Well, I'd been counting 55 all summer, you know, I pretty much knew I had 55 turkeys. Well, then, uh, then the fisher cat, which if you're not familiar, it's like a big weasel. It's actually called a fisher. But around here, the locals call them fisher cats. I think because the big ones kind of look like a cat. Um, then they, they will eat cats, too. But, um... So the fisher cat started taking turkeys from me, and I was being, every once in a while, I'd be, my turkey population was going down steadily. You know, every few days I'd lose one, and I was down on like 40 some odd, until I finally took care of the fisher cat. But, uh, so then I was counting 40, 40, 40, 40, whatever, and fall came around, it was getting late in the fall. Hi, good girl. And, um... All of a sudden, I came home one day, <clears throat> and I counted them, and I had, like, almost 60. I was like, what? So, I had had a bunch that were, uh, that were living out in the wild, and I decided, I think they decided it was, you know, and when I counted them, then I noticed that there was a whole group of them kind of inside. They would flock up, they would group up, you know, in the yard when I'd come home and, and kind of, you know, wait to see what I had for them to eat and stuff and say hello. And it'd be a big group of them in the yard, and that's when I used to count them. And, uh, and I noticed there was a whole bunch of them kind of sheepishly on the inside of the group trying to, like, blend in. Like, I don't know if they thought what they thought, but uh, it was pretty cool because I lost a whole bunch to the fisher cat. You know, and I was finding feathers and, and carcasses and things, so I know, I know they were getting eaten. And then uh, I, I think the other ones decided, well, you know, winter's coming. Uh, we better we better move back, back into the uh, flock. Little did they know it was about time for Thanksgiving, and they were all destined for uh, for the deep fryer or somebody's oven. And you know, I don't do that anymore since I've been saved. I I don't uh, I don't like killing them anymore. I never liked killing them, but it never used to really bother me. But uh, I used to deep fry those those heirloom, those those gray and red, and and my breed, those those turkeys. They didn't get real huge like the white ones. I used to raise white ones too, and I had I had some white ones that that dressed out ready for the oven at over 50 pounds. I had one dressed out at 56 and a half pounds, and it buried the scale, so it was probably more than or 52 and a half pounds, and it buried the scale. So I don't know how big it really was. Um, you couldn't fit those in an oven. I used to put them on my pig rotisserie and spin them. Uh, you know, like like roasting a pig, or else I would quarter them up. I remember one year at the, with those big fifty pounders, you'd get about you'd get about twenty pounds of boneless breast meat off of off of one bird. You'd get uh, my leg quarters were like nine nine pounds a leg quarter. I remember one year one of those big ones. I weighed all the all the, all the pieces when I quarter them up. I had wings that were two and a half two and a half pounds per per wing. You could you could make a meal out of a turkey wing. Um, those were the commercial ones, but those small ones, the, a bit a big male, a big gobbler on the small on the small heirloom types would be um, maybe thirteen fourteen. Real giant one might be fifteen pounds. The, the females were more like nine ten pounds, so they're a perfect size for the deep fryer. Um, See, did you hear that? That's a that's a warning noise. See, but uh, only a few of them only a few of them heeded it because it was from this guy here, and he's not he's not respected in the flock too much. He's like low rooster on a totem pole. And he decided he was going to put a warning noise out for some reason or another. But earlier when they all took off, there was that was uh, that was one of the better roosters that they respect. I like this guy here. He was hatched here last year, just like those little babies that we've been looking at. Only that mother, uh, she hatched six. Four of them made it. He was one of them. He's pretty sharp, though. He's a real cool-looking bird. And actually, that mother, 
with the two. This mother right here, she was uh, she was one of the ones that hatched last year. So, it's good genetics for hatching their own babies. I don't know where the the mother from last year is. If I see her, I'll show you guys. You see, they're fitting. They're fitting right in with the flock now. So, all right, a little bit of a change from my last video. A little more lighthearted, chicken oriented, less uh, Satan oriented and enemy oriented. But uh, I've got to, uh, I got to go fill up all the get their water. I'll show you guys too. I got a got a load of bananas for them. They really like bananas. But I usually take them out of the peel. <clears throat> I'm gonna hit pause and I'll I'll peel some bananas. I'll show you guys they like bananas a lot. I don't know my phone's being difficult. Yeah, bananas are one of their favorites. They love bananas. Even if they're full, they'll find room for bananas. Kind of like corn. They really like. Watermelon they'll always find room for. Um, it's funny, there's certain things you would think they would like that they don't. They don't eat they don't really like strawberries. If there's nothing else, they will eat them, but there's They'll save the strawberries for last. They really don't like strawberries, and you would think that'd be really good chicken food. They really like grapes, though. They love grapes. They love, like, raspberries and blueberries, but they don't like strawberries for some reason. Um, they, they, yeah, they like any kind of melon. Cantaloupes, watermelon. They really like. In the fall, uh, I got pumpkins. I used to get pumpkins for my pigs. And I'd feed pigs for a couple months just off the pumpkins that I would get after Halloween. And they were really good pig food because they would, uh, you know, they store really well. You can just make a big pile of them. But uh, chickens, I crack them open and they get all the, they love all the seeds and the kind of the pulpy stuff. And if they're hungry enough, they'll eat the meat of it. But All right, I see this video now is 17 minutes long, so I should probably cut it off or it won't upload. But, uh, yeah, just some chicken stuff for you guys to check out and some farm stories from the past. I can, maybe I'll make a thing of periodically telling some farm stories. I got a lot of cool stuff. I raised, I raised animals for like 15 years up there out of my cabin. And I had pigs and lots of poultry, ducks and geese and, uh, you know, my turkeys were a lot of fun. I could tell you more turkey stories. The turkeys have a lot of personality. But, uh, all right. I love you guys very much. And, uh, take care and God bless.